In today's message, I wanna talk about the importance and significance of pruning in your life. Let's talk about it. Shalom. Thank you for tuning in to another Righteous Spirit-filled episode. Today, I'm back at it in them trenches, handling that kingdom business. Man, when it comes to, you know, applying the very same thing that you read in scripture, oftentimes people have a hard time understanding parables and analogies in scripture. And today, I'm going to be talking about something that you might be avoiding doing but it's very much needed you know when the scripture says build ye houses and plant ye gardens that's an instruction right there and you really never truly understand or comprehend what scripture is talking about if you don't apply the very same thing that you're reading you know the topic of discussion today is pruning you know, pruning, shaping the plant, you know, for maximum yield to make sure that leaves or branches that have been bug infested or that are dead and withered up aren't robbing nutrients and the plant isn't trying to provide nutrients to parts of the, the stock or parts of the vine that have no life in them. So the, the concept of pruning, you're snipping off the bad leaves. You're snipping off the bad uh, branches. You know, if the plant has fruit that's rotten, you're snipping that off. You're not gonna eat it anyways. You got bug infestations on certain part of the plant. You prune it, you snip it off. But oftentimes in religion, people will read over this stuff and never apply it once. You know, and I recommend if you have the space, I don't care if it's a patio, grow you something. Whether it's one plant, one fruit, one vegetable, grow you something so you can actually put your hands on, you know, what Abba Yah has asked you to do. You know, in Western culture, we get so caught up in just going to the grocery store that you only think men are supposed to provide money so you can go buy. But what happened to the men in the book that were actually, you know, possibly not providing money, but could provide all of the things that they were supposed to? We've gotten away from that. You know, man, there is some pruning that you're going to have to do in your life, and it's going to be uncomfortable. It may be your mama. It may be your daddy. It may be, you know, your siblings. It might be your friends, your family. You know, you got people that are lifeless, spiritually dead, reject anything you tell them, but they're still attached to the vine. They're still getting fed. And the world doesn't want you to prune the stuff that's dead. You got a leaf attached to your vine that has no life in it whatsoever. Lost cause. And rather than trying to preserve you know, the rest of the plant, you end up losing it all, having mental health problems, going crazy because you got all this dead weight associated with you. You got a tomato where it's getting ate out by bugs, by white flies, and you still finding excuses and justification to leave it attached rather than snipping it off for the benefit of the rest of the plant. You know, you could have people want so much from you and these people be spiritually dead that you don't even you know allow nutrients to go where they need to as a man that's your kids why have time to be helping all these other folks that's spiritually dead spiritually retarded you gotta prune you know man 
man, you might have friends that constantly reject or say you don't know what you're talking about, but you're the one always helping them get up out of a situation. And just when you think you got some kind of predictability, here comes that friend with another one of their problems. It's time to prune, time to prune. Because what happened is, if you got a part of that doggone branch that's being attacked spiritually and you leave it connected to the vine, see what's gonna happen is that wickedness will continue to attack the rest of the plant. Fruit over here that you had that was once good, now it's getting attacked. Now it's not growing up as strong as it could be because we got all the nutrients trying to spread all these different directions and all these, all these different directions aren't even leading to new life. It's already dead. You got people in your life that's rotted fruit, crumbled leaves, withered leaves, and you're trying to save them, make excuses, making excuses for them. You know, the Messiah, Yahshua Hamashiach said, man, if a man is not willing to hate, you know, his mother, his father, his wife, his children, and even his own life, you can't be my disciple. He wasn't playing. You're gonna have to cut some people off in order to follow him. But look how many people we got out here claiming to follow Jesus, but still got wickedness attached to you. Sometimes you have to let these people notice, hey, this is my last, this is my last rodeo with you. I've been working with you and you haven't, you, you haven't received no wisdom. You are dead weight, lifeless. And I know some people are like, man, you would do that to your, your family? Sure would. You mean to tell me I'm supposed to keep trying to throw a lifeline to somebody that's trying to sink the ship? No, we gonna do some pruning. I'm telling you, the world will not support, this wicked world won't support you saving yourself. They won't support it. You cut off your woman as a man because she's wicked. Oh, you shouldn't have done that to her. She was so sweet. But they didn't have to live in the house with her and see the rebellion and nonsense that woman was putting you through. You know, you got a mama that just, that claims to be religious, but won't do right. And you just supposed to keep being her son husband? Prune her, cut her off. In Ecclesiasticus, it talks about not having a multitude of unprofitable children. You got children that's rooted in wickedness. You got children that's attacked spiritually and you've been trying to help them for years. You mean to tell me I'm just supposed to allow my child as a crackhead come in my house every time and steal stuff? No, cut them off, prune. See, in life, there's lessons that can be taught and there's lessons that have to be learned. And some of these lessons by you pruning people, you finally allow that lesson to be learned. You're steady trying to teach somebody something that they must learn on their own. You can't teach them. You know, I've told men this time and time again, you know, if you have a wicked woman and you cut her off, there may be some point where she reaches out to you and lets you know, hey, I was so wrong. I was so wrong. Happens like that, but you have to prune in order to experience new life. You cut off some old, and next thing you know, a healthy, a healthy branch stems off and bears good fruit. These is more than just parables, but until you actually get your hands dirty, get you a pot, get you a bag of soil, some seeds, take something through the germination process, making sure it's good soil in there, making sure it's rooted properly. When it starts to sprout, you watching it, checking up under the leaves at any sign of attack, you gotta take action. Because if you let it go on, you know, unnoticed or unattended to, you gonna have to cut off whole branches, you know, leaves, fruit. This is the pruning of life that you may be avoiding. You're never gonna understand some of these things in scripture if you don't actually do them with your hands. Most of the God Ministries kicking a gun barrel straight. Bow.